In today's video, we're gonna talk about compression. The benefit of today's video is it will literally mean that you can put in less effort and quite literally less club head speed and get more distance. This is something that you really need to know. So let's get stuck into it. We wanna understand about compression is it's two things. What we are basically trying to do is we are trying to get the club to move through the ball whilst avoiding too much of a steepening angle of attack and what we also need to do is we need to make sure the club face is square at the point of impact. Now, just to put that into context, if you imagine like a lob shot or a bunker shot, what you would do is two things. You would start coming down and you are trying to consciously let the club head plow in towards the floor. So you would quite literally stop the handle from moving and you would let the club head dive in towards the floor. And if you did that with an open face, that is a good recipe for being able to put in lots and lots of club head speed, but get very little distance. And when you're doing a bunker shot or a lob shot, that's what you want. You wanna be able to hit it hard, hit it with that sort of scooping action because it pops the ball up in the air. But obviously, if you are somebody who is doing that type of technique with your irons, this is exactly the reason why you don't hit the ball anywhere. So there's two things that we need to do. We need to make sure that the angle of attack is not too downward, so it's more of a sweeping sensation. And the second thing that we need to do is make sure that obviously when we return the club face, it needs to be pointing in the direction. Getting both of those is going to give you that sort of optimum sort of compression and stop you sort of having to swing so hard at the ball. I personally think the best way to practice this is lead hand only. Okay, now what you would do is you would swing back lead hand only and just try and swing your left arm as far as you possibly can. Now, as you start the downswing, what you want to do is you need to learn to rotate. See, if you watch me, let, watch my lower body and my chest turn towards the top. Target. So if I do that again, like so, right? Now, what you'll notice if you practice this, and you can actually use your right hand and apply a little bit of pressure just to take the weight of the club. And then as I do it, so my right hand is not pulling the club down, it's keeping it up in the air. And as I turn, what we can start to see is the way that my hands are coming down. Now, my hands are coming down as a byproduct of rotation. Okay, so as my lower body and my chest are turning progressively towards the target, you can see the way now, if you focus your attention on my shoulder, as I keep turning, you see my shoulder goes more up and behind me. So as my shoulder's going more back behind my head, this is having, a, again, an effect where my hands are going forward. And this is the thing you need to understand. As you start the downswing, if you're somebody who just pulls the club down, then what will happen is that your hands are not progressively getting over the ball. When you are practicing this exercise, you want to pause at the moment in time when your hands or the club shaft is parallel and your hands should be located over your trail thigh. This is very important because from this point in time, what that means is I can now allow the handle of the club to move up and then the club head can drop down on the back of the ball. If you are somebody who pulls the club down and you end up too far away, obviously you can't get the feeling of the handle going up because you won't hit the ball. So that's why you have to sort of throw the club head to the back of the golf ball to get contact. So the important thing to understand here is twofold. One, that your rotation should be the thing that leads the downswing. And the second thing is you want to spend a little bit of time practicing lead hand only, and you want to just make sure you're pausing at the point of the time when the club shaft's parallel, and you want to make sure your hands are located opposite your trail thigh. If you can do that, then you're going to have a really good chance of compressing the golf ball. You start to practice this position. Now, obviously, for most golfers who are kind of over here and pulling down the club, what you've always done is you've always kind of got the club face square to your target with a sort of flipping motion, which is like so. Now, all of a sudden, let's kind of assume that you're able to get into the club, into the position that I previously demonstrated. Well, now your hands are going to be further ahead. So see, my hands are now ahead of the golf ball as opposed to our previous scooping action. So from this position, what you would then need to practice is just making sure that you allow that lead arm to rotate to square the face. And by all means, and I tend to encourage my students to do this, practice swing single-armed. You'll probably find it much easier. Swing back, start the downswing rotation, let your head move if that helps. And then as you continue, just as you come towards this bottom part of the swing, you have to allow now, see, watch this, the lead arm to rotate. And if I can get the feeling of turning through the ball and just allowing that club face to square at the bottom part of that golf swing, that is gonna be the recipe for compression. You have to do both of those. Occasionally, I'll meet students that will do a really good job of rotating because they leave the face wide open, it goes shooting off towards the right-hand side and they lose confidence in the idea. Those are the two things that you wanna really be working on. The drill that I would suggest that you practice is just a simple split handle exercise. So this basically means instead of holding the club as you normally would, I want you to take 
take all of the fingers off that trail hand. The reason why is because with a lot of golfers, you will probably be getting your right arm or your trail arm into a bad position, which will stop you from swinging the club as we've demonstrated. So by simply practicing with your hand to the side of the club like so, it can't have enough of an involvement now to upset what we've been working on. And this will feel very difficult, but that's obviously the idea. The idea now is that you can practice just doing a, you know, whatever length of swing you feel comfortable with, but turn. Okay, and then as you turn and you get the club face square, what you're gonna to start to notice is a similar sound to that one. That's gonna sound much better. That's our compression. Compression is gonna lend itself to more distance. And that's why this drill is quite a good one because it might test your coordination, but as time goes on, you'll actually notice the way you can get the same sort of distance by doing this as you can by gripping the life out of the club. So if you're a flipper, keep doing it for your lob shots, but start working on these exercises to improve. See you soon.